At this point in time, during this um, happy International Women's Day celebration, I am going to be delving into not just the career path of women, but also women in businesses. This, I'm talking about women CEOs, women who own their own businesses. So right here in the studio, I'm joined by Mrs. Onye Dikachuku Ohuche. I beg your pardon, please. <laughs> Mrs. Onye Dikachuku Ohuche. She is the CEO of Kachi Foods. So I'd like to know why she actually chose to go into this food business actually because this is um, very interesting actually I have my own female CEO right here on this special day of International Women's Day celebration so welcome to Market Insight Mrs. Ohuche. Thank you so much thank you for having me. Yes this is wonderful so um, yes yeah, so on this day well the theme for um, International Women's Day is invest in a woman and accelerate progress. And as you know, the popular saying, when you educate the girl child, when you educate the woman, you educate a nation because women are the type of people that actually spread love. They actually contribute more to um, enhancing that there's progress going on in their community. So as a woman in business, how has that been for you so far? But before you answer that question, can you tell us about Kachi Foods, actually? Because I'm just hearing this for the first time. What's it all about? Oh, okay. Interestingly, Kachi's Food um, is a business where we help you revive your childhood memories by offering you a wide range of local snacks, like um, snacks like uh, Sisi Pelebe, um, Baba Dudu, Kokoro, you know those snacks Do. that evolve a kind of nostalgia anytime you see or hear about them. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Because I've, I've, I've just heard of this actually, like the kind of Nigerian snacks that we have there, they are not too popular, but a lot of people know about these snacks, okay. Yes, so I want to know, we know we have so many businesses that women can go into, but why did you choose food business? Or okay. better still, the snack business. Okay, interestingly, I was I, I read mechanical engineering oh, wow. from Federal University That's of Technology. And very interesting. So when I finished, I was actually working at an oil servicing company in Port Harcourt before I got married. Okay. And my husband stays in Lagos, and I didn't okay. want to do the long distance thing. So I had to resign from my job to come to Lagos, stay with my husband. So when I got to Lagos, uh, it was my first time actually living in Lagos. So it was a, a, a different ball game. It was a different environment. It was a different kind of people. I was born in the north, so you can imagine the drastic change from yeah. being born in the north and then living in Lagos. So it was quite a tedious time and challenging time for me because I was at home doing nothing. My husband leaves for work by 6 a.m. and comes back probably 6, 7 after Lagos traffic. He works on the island. That's so nice. it was quite challenging for me to go from working to now doing nothing. Yes. Um, but um, one thing that stood out for me was during that time, I found out that I was interested in food. I'm, I've always been a foodie. So I would, I would, to keep myself busy, I would go online, look for recipes, and try to recreate those recipes at home, just to give myself something to do, and then share to my neighbors to eat for free. So one of my neighbors actually mentioned that instead of looking for a job, while I was actually act actively seeking for another yes. career opportunity. Yes. Uh -huh. So she was saying, it's like, instead of looking for jobs, yeah. why not face this and do it full time? So I think that was like the, the first mention. That was like the first step for me. I, I, I didn't feel I was a business person at all. I was like me. If customer talks to me, I'll just cry. <laughs> I can never run a business. But um, over the years, I just realized that this might actually be a good thing. It's something I'm passionate about. It's something I think I'm good at. So why not look at the opportunity? So that was how Kachi's Food was born, 20, 2017, I think. So you've been doing this business since yes, 2017. Over that, five that's years, very yes. interesting. So how did you actually start it? Because we know a lot of people require capital, sufficient capital to start their business. Was it easy for you to get access to capital? Did you have to get a loan? Like, what was it like trying to process your own credit facility for your uh, business? Okay, that's a very good question, especially in these times, because you cannot run a business without money. Yes. But it's also true that you have to start from where you are. A lot of people, a lot of women feel that if they don't have a certain amount of money, they cannot start business. I don't feel that way because I didn't start with a lot of money. Mm -hmm. My husband was doing a nine to five job and there was really not much he can provide um, fund wise, not because he didn't want to, but because of the situations, you get me. Yeah. So I started from where I was. I started from my house, I started from my kitchen. I started from making for my friends and family. That was how I started. Were you paid for this? Yeah, at first I was giving it out free. 
until my neighbor was like, <laughs> like I love to see you. Yes, because like, I didn't yourself, feel that I was a, a business person, you get. But what happened was somebody took a chance. Somebody okay. said, um, you, you actually you make chinchin, right? I said, yes. Yeah. Say, okay, I want you to make chinchin for me. For and I'll never forget that because that was the first person. And she was a lady. Wow, yes, that, I said, that is, I want you to so make chinchin for me. My child is having a birthday party and I want to share chinchin at the birthday party. And I was like, I did, I, funny enough, I didn't even charge her. I just said, I give me money for the ingredients. I will make it for you. And that's it. Are you and that's she just, it. Oh my yes, and that's how I started. I started by making for her. And she was like, oh, this is really good though. It's actually, and some piece, other people ate it at the party and was like, who did this chinchin? Please give me her contact. And sincerely, that was how I started. I didn't start opening up a store somewhere. No, that's not how I started. I started in my kitchen. I started making that's for great. one or two. Family, family, family. That's how I started. Close friends. And from there, referrals came in and the brand grew. That, that is absolutely wonderful. I actually like that because we often hear, oh, I want to start my business. Let me go and look for capital. Let me get a loan. And we know there are challenges with that because sometimes some financial institutions require collateral for these things. And then when you can't provide your as a loss, you as a setback, you keep trying to figure out how to raise the money to do your own business. But you starting from your own kitchen in your house, making for friends and family, that is superb. So um, how, what is, do you, I just want to know going further, actually, what do you really think is the impact of female entrepreneurs in the economy and also in society at large? I think in the last um, five years, maybe or less, female, more women have joined the entrepreneurship train and it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Actually, research has that um, female entrepreneurs contribute about 50% of our GDP and more than 23 million females are entrepreneurs. So it's growing. It's no longer, we're no longer in that time where um, the place of a woman is in the kitchen or in the home and all that. We are, going, we're, we're at a, a place right now in the country where women are actively working, women are actively hustling, women are actively solving problems. And I think that entrepreneurship is one of the best things a woman can do because it teaches you how to be dogged. It teaches you how to be resilient. It teaches you, especially in Nigeria, it teaches yeah. you how to never give up. Yeah. you know and that is the kind of value we want to impact to our children because the women most times are the closest teachers to our kids yes. so if i'm in business i've learned not to give our learn that it's good to cry but after you cry you dust yourself up you get up and you you go harder you get so i teach that to my kids anytime they feel that they failed and it's over you know how children are i cannot do it i tell them that no you, you won't become much being like that you have to have that spirit and you have to learn to encourage yourself because most times we wait for encouragement to come from outside. It's yeah. good for encouragement to come from outside, but at certain times you must learn to be your own whistleblower. Yeah. So women in entrepreneurship build character and that character reflects on our children. And we need to build a generation of people who are dogged and resilient. Totally. I totally agree with you on that. Totally like the fact that you are inspiring your children and also other women who are try, trying to get into the business sector to being CEOs in their own different areas, actually. So how possible was it for you, like, you know, starting out your own business? Like, right, you said you had to move from Port Harcourt to Lagos. This was, must have been quite a new change for you, yes, actually, coming to Lagos for the first time with all the traffic in the city and then having to um, not do anything at first. Then from there, you now move on to starting your own business how was it balancing both for you the family life and also your business first of all i know you started in 2017 i'm quite sure that was difficult just doing this um, snacks for free then before you started earning your own money so what was it like for you that period um, when i started earlier i didn't really have so much customer so i still had time for uh, my children and to do the basic that i had to do but the truth is that as your business grows, you have to put structure in place yes. and you have to get help. Yes, yes. See, strong women, <laughs> it's good to be a strong woman, but a strong woman is a woman who also knows when to ask for help. Yes. Because people have said we are strong and people in the bid of being strong have ruined their lives or ruined their businesses. So I think that is a, is a very... It's a very thin line that we have to tread carefully, especially when your business starts to expand and increase and when you start to scale. Yeah. I think for me personally, what has helped me is knowing what my priorities are. Knowing what my priorities are. If you come out, for example, you come out in, in a day, do you, like this morning, I had my children's um, open day at school oh. and I had to be here. Yeah. And the open day starts by nine. So I have to tell myself priorities. 
if I said I want to come for this, this um, talk, I'm going to miss my children's open day. So I woke up earlier. I went for the children's day. I finished the open day, and I'm here. So we have to learn to set our priorities straight because our families cannot afford to suffer because we are entrepreneurs. And to be honest, that's the fear most men have when you tell them about um, opening a store for their women or um, encouraging their women to be entrepreneurs. They feel they, they, would, they, they, they will lose their wives. They will no longer be the submissive wives. They will no longer be there to take care of. Who will take care of the children? Is it me that will be at home? You get. So we also have to learn how to draw those lines. You have to learn how to schedule time to keep your phone down, set your business aside, right. and okay, this is family time. We have to learn how to, okay, if in, I have four, four weeks in a month, will I keep out two, mo two, week, two weekends for my kids? Do we go somewhere? Do we hang out? Do we just have time? Okay. Yeah. And I know sometimes it's not a, an easy balance to draw, but I think we should make an effort. Make an effort in setting our priorities right. Make an effort in trying to know when to say no. It's not every job offer you must take. It's not every offer. That, it's not everything that comes that some jobs you say, no, I have something I have to be. I have somewhere I have to be at. You understand? So that will help us to draw the line going forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Thank, Thank you, you very much for that, Mrs. Onye Dikachi. So I just want to ask you, like, you know, um, the theme for this year's um, International Women's Day is invest in a woman, accelerate progress. So do you th really think that women can have it all in terms of personal fulfillment, career success, and also the family life? Do you really think it's possible for women to have it all? Uh, well, I believe that there's nothing that's impossible. And I've seen, we've seen trailblazers, women who have gone ahead of us, um, Ngozi Okonji Uwala, um, was in Aisha Yusufu, um, what, what, what are their names? So many of yes, them, Obi, Obi yeah. so many of them have gone ahead and have shown us that it's actually possible for us to, to be a, a trailblazer in career or in business wise and then still keep our homes. But I think that it's very important, like I said earlier, for us to draw our priorities, know where our priorities are. Because the truth is that if we focus entirely on our businesses and neglect our homes, then we have a problem. Yeah. Because what will happen tomorrow is that we'll raise children who have no sense of family, who have no sense of, of, of what family should look like. And that's not very good. And either if we focus entirely on family and forget the business, we, the, we th the way things are going, the men need help. Uh, and women, uh, if you are working, you have some form of income, you have some form of, it gives you options. And that's good for a woman to have. Yeah. So I, I think that women can actually have it all. Women can be, in, have successful careers and still be and a good businesses mom. Too, yes, yes, and, and successful business mom. And, and, and still be a mom too. and be a good wife. Yeah. The fact that you are the CEO does not mean that you are your husband's CEO. You are still his wife. So you should know when to wear a cap and when to put that cap down. I think Thank that's you very much for that, Mrs. Onye Dikachi. Yes, so this is absolutely wonderful. I've been sharing this discussion on how women can actually participate in their businesses and how they can also balance it family, um, family and career-wise and also being very good entrepreneurs. So that was our package this morning on Market Insights on this International Women's Day celebration where you invest in a woman and you accelerate progress. And you can see from the guests that I had this morning, we're able to actually balance their personal lives and also their careers and their businesses and how in addition to this how they can also impact in their different families and raise children who are upstanding and who can contribute positively to their societies which is the total success of this whole package so thank you so much for joining me this morning on Marcus Insights and stay tuned for our continuous programming on Souk News I remain your host Lovina Emma thank you so much Mrs. Onye Dikachi for joining us this morning thank you yes <music>